All right, everybody. Welcome to part two of the status update for Project Nexus. Uh, this is week 23 of development for us. I am Andrew Gasson. I am the design lead for the project. Uh, all, also with me is Andrew Bertino. He's going to be playing as we go through the sunroom, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the new development and technical challenges that we've had in that section. So he's going to go ahead and open that map up for us. So we're familiar territory again. I know we've shown this several times, but I really want to get into a little bit more detail about some of the challenges we've had in this room and how we overcame them. So as you can see, we've got the cinematics still going. You're going to notice the small baby spiders running around the floor again. The spiders have been one of our sources of focus for, for several weeks now, and how are we going to improve combat, improve the feel of playing our game against these enemies. So uh, we're having some audio issues here, but uh, as you can see we have blood splatters now for the spiders. When you give, uh, when you give damage to them, they're going to splat on the ground, on the uh, objects that cause the damage, as well as on the walls. Uh, one of the other things, after he kills them, you're going to notice that they now go into a ragdoll state. Beforehand we had the ability to move our enemies, but they would stay in their walking animation. So now when we die, or when we kill them, or when we're manipulating them with our powers, they're going to enter in a ragdoll state that just looks a little bit more natural. Uh, for those of you with astute eyes, you may have noticed a frame rate drop temporarily. And that's actually coming because we are loading in a giant scene outside the door. Um, that's one of the issues that we've been facing with level streaming is we we're faced with uh, trying to pick between the lesser of two evils. We either have a... Um, a very long load screen at the beginning or we're going to have a small frame rate hitch in the middle of the level while we're streaming the next section in. So we've been working on trying to find some workarounds with that. We've been playing some of the other games that use this technology uh, and seeing how they did it. And uh, the fact of the matter is that we have a lot to learn about how UDK handles level, work, uh, level loading. So that's something that we've been working very hard on trying to figure out. So hopefully we can avoid having the frame rate uh, chugs that we're having in this current section. Um, so it's the same puzzle that we've shown for the past several weeks now. We don't want to change too much about it. But we're getting pretty decent feedback from playtesting. And one of the hardest things for us as developers is we see this week after week after week. And we're in this level every day. So before long, this begins to get very monotonous for us. Uh, having fresh eyes coming from the playtesting is one of the best things that can happen to a development team because ideas that used to be really great in our minds suddenly start to depreciate over time. Having the playtesters come in and actually enjoy the experience with our game is something that is very powerful for us. So this is the, uh, um, the back of the sunroom section now. We've changed that drastically through playtesting results. Uh, both ex internal and external. So we're hoping that this is going to be a much more dynamic end to this level. And that's been gone through as many uh, iterations as this room has in general. We'll go ahead and do the uh, spin again. So we're having issues with uh, our character spinning. Uh, that actually is coming from a trans uh, translation problem with the animations. Uh, we've been fighting that for a few weeks now. We do know what the solution is to that, so we're going to be able to get that fixed. What we have is we have a targeting mode animation and a adventure mode animation, and they're a couple degrees off of each other, so when you transition from one to the other, the character, instead of rotating the short way, decides he wants to rotate the long way around. Uh, that's where we get some of that weird uh, Barry Sanders NFL-style spinning going on. So more of the platforming that we've shown in previous weeks here. Not a whole lot has been changed to this. Um, I do, am going to be pointing out a few things at the end of this room here. Also, there were a few challenges that we had to overcome in order to get the frame rate to remain stable with all the fire going on. Uh, we did place uh, LODs. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's the level of detail. Uh, we did place those settings on the fire particle effects. The particle effects are very expensive in our engine, uh, so we needed to find a way to reduce those. The flames that are close to you are going to have a visible distortion effect. The flames that are farther away actually have that effect, and the smoke turned off to try to save some of the, uh, some of the frame rate. He's going to continue along this path here. Uh, 
what you're seeing, he didn't actually turn the camera there. That's a predetermined thing that we were able to set thanks to some code from our programmers. That we have this ability to, uh, it's called a camera look at, that we can have the camera force the player to look a certain direction or suggest the player to look a certain direction. So that's been very valuable to add some of the uh, cinematic flair to our game. What you're seeing here is an animation that has been worked on by Joey Hannes, who is our lead level designer for this uh, particular section. That animation was come together between him, Jagadish, and Ken in order to get that looking well, and that's been a significant improve over the past weeks. So the section that we're at now uh, is this cave. Uh, more of what we talked about a little bit earlier is we did want to include the uh, technology behind the magic that happens in this temple. So this is, uh, if you can think of it as the floor has collapsed through this section and has revealed exactly how the temple works. So we've got these massive gears that are powering uh, the whole temple. So this is where the player is actually going to have to platform across in order to escape out of the back. So the escape scene is very similar to what we've shown before, but the method of escape is drastically different. You can see we do have a little bit of platforming here. One thing that we've been really trying to focus on is trying to incorporate our platforming uh, directly with our powers so that we can not have two separate game mechanics that work against each other, but instead one game mechanic that takes advantage of both of those components. So the objective is to uh, ride this gear up using our powers and uh, right now we are actually in the middle of tuning some of our abilities so we're probably going to have to debug out of this which is fairly common for us. So we'll enter our fly mode, escape out of there and progress through to the end of this level here. So as you can see out back here, we do have this canyon scene that's been worked on by uh, Scott Pellico and Mike Bakerman. Um, we've got the temple collapsing. We're still iterating on that. Barack Moshi has been working on uh, some baked animations in Maya to get our roof collapse feeling more authentic. And when those come in, that's going to add an entirely different level of uh, destruction to the end of this sequence here. Um, like I said earlier, this canyon scene has been retooled completely, again, to show more of the uh, real-world real world technology behind the magic of the temple. You can see things off in the distance. Um, it's really just going to be a very dynamic ending to our game. So, aside from that, there weren't a whole lot of changes made to the sunroom. We're constantly improving on it, trying to do a lot of the cleanup, such as collision issues, uh, making sure that uh, the players can't go places where we don't want them to. Uh, we do get a lot of players that find themselves getting stuck in between objects, and that's where playtesting has come in handy. So this room has gone through three sections of playtesting, and we're going to continue to do it until we can find out all of the things that we need to. But uh, I believe that's all that we have for this week, so uh, thanks for watching.